everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to hike to Telescope Peak, the highest point here in Death Valley National Park at 11,000 and change. Now, this is one of my favorite hikes uh, ever, probably top 10. It's beautiful. You hike up to the peak. You can see Mount Whitney. You can see Mount Charleston by Las Vegas. You get beautiful views down into Death Valley and Badwater Basin right over there. And it's just a really well-maintained, well-formed trail. Just a really, really fun time. Now, if you want to do the hike, I highly recommend it, but go to hikingguy.com first. I have uh, information on getting to the trailhead, all these stats. It's about 12 and a half miles, about 3,000 feet of climbing. But all those details are on the webpage. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link to that right underneath the video. And if you are watching on YouTube, if you could do me a big solid and just click that little thumbs up, it's an easy way to say thank you for the video. It also helps other people find the video and hopefully do the hike safely. So uh, with all that out of the way, let me show you what the hike is like. It's a cool one. All right, so from the trailhead at Mahogany Flat, we're going to just go up the road a little bit. And it's a little bit tricky in the beginning because there's a road that goes up to Rogers Peak where there's some radio equipment, but we're going to go up towards that gate and then we're going to make the left. And there's an interpretive sign here now that tells you a little bit about the trail. There you can see the road. If you go another minute or two, you will see a sign for Telescope Peak. And it says seven miles, a little bit shorter than that, but you know, it's the Park Service, so they want to make it a little bit scary for people who aren't prepared. There's a register. You don't need a permit or anything special to do this hike, uh, but you can sign at the register. And if you do camp, you can do a voluntary backcountry permit. Now, the first uh, two miles or so are pretty steep. I think you're going to climb about 1,500 feet in two miles. So it's a pretty steep climb. You can see there's some snow here. Generally, this is snowed in between November and May or June. And here I am in October, and there's still a little bit of snow on the trails. But... You can see the sun is just coming up. We have great views down in there into uh, Hanopa Valleys and Death Valley down there. That's where the park is, or the main part of the park. And when you from around the first bend, you're going to see a Telescope Peak there in the distance. And this is one of those hikes where we're going to see it the entire way, uh, pretty much. You can see the ridge up there. We're going to be following that ridge all the way around till we get up to the peak. And there you can really see the trail as it goes around. That other peak on the left is called Bennett Peak. We're going to pass that. We'll go around it. But after about two miles, you're going to come up to the saddle. This is called Arcane Meadows, named after one of the uh, original uh, people who came through here in the 1849. I'll talk about the history on the website. Back to your right is Rogers Peak, where there's the radio equipment, also named after one of those people who came through here early. And for the next about two miles or so, it's flat. It's really nice and cruisy. You're going to go up along this ridge line here in the middle of the Panamint Mountains. Eventually, you're going to kind of come across the western side. You're going to be able to see down into the Panamint Valley. And as you continue on, you can look back and see Mount Whitney, if it's clear, and White Mountain Peak or White Mountains back there. You can see some of the pines as we come along here, but it's really, really beautiful as the trail goes around Bennett Peak, which is up to the left. If you want to bag it, it's not too hard to scramble up there. But we're going to wind around the west side of Bennett Peak, and then eventually Telescope Peak appears in the distance once again. There it is in front of us as we approach it. And then you're going to get a little bit closer, and again, this is all flat. This is all nice and flat and cruisy. If anything, it can get pretty breezy and windy up here, so just beware. And we come around here, we can see Badwater Basin, the lowest point in the United States, just under, I think it's like 282 feet below sea level. Now we're going to start going up the last two miles or so. We're going to start going up, look down into the Anopa Valley or Canyon again. You can hike up from there too, but it is much different than this. Uh, I don't recommend it, at least on your first try. And you can see there's some camping areas. You can camp up here uh, anywhere on this trail within two miles or two miles past the start. You can camp and there are a lot of pre-established sites if you want to do it. It's a little bit breezy, but uh, it'll be a cool place. And now we start going up towards the summit here. And you can see once we cross about 10,000 feet, 
We're going to see some bristlecone pines. Some of these are up to 5,000 years old. And the oldest one known on Earth is over 5,000 years old. It's about 100 miles north of here by, uh, by White Mountain Peak. And from here, we're going to get steep once again. This is where you're going to have to put in another about 1,500 feet of climbing up to the summit. Luckily, there are some switchbacks. There's about a dozen switchbacks as we climb up here towards the summit. So we do have a little bit of help as we go up. And the views, obviously, are pretty spectacular. This whole hike is just draw, dot, draw jaw dropping in terms of the views. Here you can see there's some maintenance or some well-maintained switchbacks here. And this trail is maintained by the Park Service. It might not be super popular, but it is um, all in order and nice to climb pretty easy as we go up. Now we can see here we're approaching what I'd call maybe like a false summit up by the saddle. This is not Telescope Peak. You're going to kind of go up by that little hump and then make the hard left and do the last little section up to the summit. And it's not far from here, just maybe 10 minutes. And you can see you get some nice views down into the Panamint Valley and the peaks in the distance. You could probably see down to the high peaks of uh, the San Bernardinos from here on a clear day. And there's the summit straight ahead. Now, some people have a problem uh, with this last little section. People have fear of heights. It's not a knife drop off the edge or anything. You can see we have a good, I don't know, 10, 20 feet of relatively uh, level uh, you know, terrain on either side. So you're not going to fall off the edge here, but it can be a little bit freaky because it does, it does get a little bit narrower. But we're going to keep going straight. And then here we are at the summit, around 6.3 or so miles in. And you can see there's some little clear areas where people uh, set up a bivy and camped here. I don't know if I'd do that. It's probably pretty windy like the other places, but Here's the summit. You can see down the spine of the Panamint Range as we go over here. If you look over to the um, west, you can see the Sierras. Here you can see somebody on this day has left actual telescope there along with the summit sign. But there's Mount Whitney up there in the haze and the forest fire haze. And again, you can look down. You can probably see San Bernardino's on a clear day from here. And then off to the east, you can see Badwater Basin all the sort of tourist areas in uh, the park. You can see Charleston Peak by Las Vegas. And yeah, that's the hike. You just go back down the way you came from here. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a really beautiful hike. If you haven't done it, I, again, highly recommend coming out here. It's a bit of a trek to get to the trailhead, but it is beautiful. It is definitely worth it. So uh, give it a shot if you have not already. And if you stick around for a second, I'll show you what this whole hike looks like on a 3D map. But otherwise, guys, I'll see you out in the trails. And if you see me, please say hello. I actually saw some people here already. Uh, and uh, it was great to meet them. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you out there, guys. Bye. All right, so here's the hike. You can see we're going south down through uh, the Panamints. And then we're going to Telescope Peak. Now, I'll talk about parking in the guide and hiking guide. But it's a dirt road that goes up from the charcoal kilns to Mahogany Flat. It's about a mile and a half. And uh, it says on the website, and there's a sign there, it says 4x4 recommended. I've definitely seen uh, Volkswagens and sedans and Priuses up here before, so you can do it. But if this gate is closed or you don't feel comfortable, you can walk up here, adding about three miles total out and back to the hike. But otherwise, we're going to come down to the Mahogany Flat parking area. And this is where the campground is right here. It's pretty awesome. It's free. It's first come, first serve. And there are some other campgrounds along the way. Here's the road up to Rogers Peak. And then here is the trail starting out. And you can see we climb up pretty steadily here. Again, it's about 1,500 feet in the first two miles. And you can really see it as we come up here. Now, interestingly, this area is part of something called the Death Valley Wilderness Area, which is a protected wilderness but you cannot have um, man-made development in the wilderness. So there's a slice cut out of the wilderness for Rogers Peak, which is um, government radio towers up here for the Air Force and that type of thing. Now, when we come up to Arcane Meadow right here, it's in between Rogers Peak and Bennett Peak. 
and Rogers, Arcane, and Bennett were all part of the party that came here. Um, and again, I'll talk about that history on the guide if you want to dive deeper there. But this is the first place where you can camp uh, officially. And I have some pictures of what these campgrounds look like. But from Arcane, we're going to come around Bennett, and then we're going to swing around the other side. This is the section I said that was flat as we go through or go along the ridge. There's some more great camping spots over here. And then we start to gently angle upward. There's Badwater Basin down there. That's the lowest point in the U.S. But by the time we get to this camping four spot, we're starting the climb in earnest. And let me swing it back around over here. And we're going pretty steeply up. This is where the bristle cones were. You can see if we go, go down here, there are some switchbacks. There's about a dozen of them as we go up here. We're going to do the switchbacks get up to the saddle right here. This is that false summit that I mentioned earlier. And then we have this ridge line. You can see it's pretty wide here until we get to the peak. And even the views on Google Earth here are pretty spectacular. But if I angle this up, you can see, um, we can see over into the main part of Death Valley. We can see around to Charleston Peak, which is over here right outside of Las Vegas. And then if we go around over here, you can see up to Mount Whitney and the high peaks in the Sierras. So that's it. Really, really cool hike. And again, definitely do it if you have not done it already. It is worth the crazy drive to get there. Thank you.